So in this video, I'm going to show you how to create this 3D magnets media style animations. Uh, let me just show you the clip. So here you will see, this is the clip that I'm going to be creating. This is a 3D type of animation going on, although it has 2D elements. So I'm going to show you how you can create that 3D effect using the 2D elements. So over here we have this building and then we have this text and this arrow over here. This is basically what I'm going to be recreating in this. And we also have these particles in the background. So this is the basic idea. For this effect, you need a building. Basically, you can just go ahead and download any PNG building file. And then you also need an arrow. So go ahead and download those two things. And once you have them, let's go ahead and add a fusion composition. So I will be using two fusion compositions. The first one will act as the background. Let's head over to the fusion composition and add a background. So over here, go ahead and change the type to gradient and keep this at linear gradient. But over here, you can just simply move this to the bottom and this one to the top. So I'm going to go ahead and add the color. Basically, I'm going to be using slightly dark colors over here. So this is how it looks. And now let's start adding the particles. So for this one, all you need to do is just drag in this P emitter and also drag in this P render. Now connect the P emitter to the P render and then the B render to this background. And now go ahead to the P emitter and over here you can start changing some settings. So first of all, go over to region and then change the region to all. Now this will allow us to add the particle on the whole stream. Now let's head over to style and then change the point to blob. Go over to the color control and here you can change the color if you want to, but I'm going to keep this white. Now go over to size control and from here you can change the size of the particles. So let's just go ahead and keep the size at 0.2 and head back to controls. And over here you can set the number, increase the number of the particles if you want to, but I'm going to keep this at 10. Now if you go over to the velocity, this will change the direction. As you can see, this is changing the direction of the particles. So let's just keep this somewhere around 0.02. And here you will see it, these are moving away. And of course you can change the angle if you want to change the rotation. Okay, so I'm going to change the angle somewhere around 150. And now I'm just going to slightly change the velocity variance so that we have a little bit movement on both sides. So here you can see there is movement on both sides. So this is what the velocity variance does. And I have set this at 0.07 or 0.08. Let's just set this at 0.08 and this is looking much better. And if you want to decrease the speed, all you need to do is just change the velocity. All right, so here we have our particles and we can also add another type of particle. So let's just add a, this P emitter once again, P render once again, and then connect these with the merge and then go over to the P emitter. But this time go over to the style and over here, just change this to lay. And also in the region, change this to all. And over here, you can go over to the controls, size controls. And from here, you can increase the size of this. So let's go over to the number, change this to five. And right now you won't be able to see it, but Z scale. And then here you will see we are getting that those lines over here. So set this around 1.3. Then you can also change the size variance if you want to. And if you want to increase the number of these, you can just simply increase the number from here. So let's go ahead with 50 for now. And let's also change the number variance. Increase the lifespan and the variance as well. And let's go over to velocity and change this velocity as well. So this is quite fast. Let's just keep this at the same velocity as we had of our previous emitter particles. And here you will see, this is how we get. And let's also change this to 
let's change this angle to 130 and change the temporal distribution to randomly distributed and head over to the style and over here just slightly decrease this so here you will see we're getting almost the same type of particles that we saw in the video and here we have our background done so if you play this now this is how the background looks so over here i'm going to drag in another fusion composition i'm going to head over to the fusion page and over here let's add in a background and a merge one and connect this with the media out head over to the background and over here change the alpha to zero and this is because we want this to appear in front of our background that we just created so if you have this at one this won't the background that we just created won't appear so let's just set this at zero so over here let's go ahead and bring in our building so i have this building over here and let's just press this transform and this will get connected and let's connect this with the merge one so here you can set the size if you want to i'll just set this to zero one point two and this is already looking in looking like something in a 3d shape so you don't need to set this to any 3d type of shape just go ahead and select any building that has this 3d kind of look basically and now let's add in our text as well now we need to add a 3d text so over here go ahead and select this text 3d while you have your text 3d one selected just press Control space and search for render 3d and then connect it to the merge one and over here let's go ahead and add in our text change the size to 0 0.3 font i'm using will be montserrat uh, gold now let's go over to transform and from here you can just decrease the z-axis a bit and move this right here and then over here in the rotation section you can change this change the y-axis to somewhere around here so that it matches the angle at which the building is as well so over here it matches matches perfectly so drag in this arrow over here and this is how the arrow looks connected with the merge tool but before we do that what you need to do is go ahead and add in a image planner 3d and connect the media to the image planner 3d and now let's search for render 3d and now connect this to the merge 3 now while you have your image plane 3d selected you can head over to transform and from here you can change the positioning of this so first of all let's decrease the size a bit channel the y-axis and the x-axis and the z-axis as well and now once you have this done you can go ahead and add in, in the, a background with the media and connect it with the image planner and from here you can change the background color but you will see you will notice that this reduces the size of the background that we have so you can just go over to image plane and then from here you can just increase the scale once again but let's set this to two all right and for the arrow i'm also going to add a soft glow so right here with the background search for soft glow and this will get attached and now you can change the gain from here the glow size from here so this is the settings these are the settings that i'm going to be using and this looks fine all right so now let's also start animating so right here in the beginning let's go ahead and click on this transform and over here at 20 let's create a keyframe at center and then at zero let's just move this right here and of course we will also add a blur just like we saw in the video so you can just search for blur and this will get added over here and then at 10 you can create a blur at zero and then at zero you can go ahead and change it to 10 and this will give you that blur effect at the beginning that we saw in the video and you can also go over to spline select your transform one and 
select these keyframes and press S on the keyboard and this will ease them in. So here you can see. And from here we can start adding this text. So let's go over to text 3D. And over here in the text section, you can just click on right on and then head over to let's say 40. Again, create a keyframe and then in the first one, just simply change this to zero. So this is how it will look. And let's also start animating the arrow from here. So I'll go over to the image plane 3D. And over here at 25, let's create a keyframe at this translation section. And let's head over to zero. And from here, we can simply just move this out. So if you play this now, this is how it will look. So here we have our animation done. Now what you can do is just click on this fusion composition that we just created and head over to dynamic zoom and then enable this and also click on swap. And if you play this now, there you will see this is how it will look. So this is how Magnus Media have these 3D kind of animations in their videos. So I hope this video was helpful and I'll see you in the next one.